this is uh, Wednesday morning digest edition my my name is Moses Mayuri and today is gonna be a great day as we come together and talk about an amazing topic that is going is uh, today we are cutting it off from uh, usual topics and we are cutting it into something very amazing please keep it up we uh, just take on the drill like we normally do we are uh, live on Facebook live on YouTube live uh, and get uh, please you can like all these pages so that we can give you prompts as fast as we can so like our facebook page youtube page x uh, instagram get on that and we shall be giving you the prompts but for today the link is already out on youtube is out on facebook please pick it up and put it on all your pages Let's call your friends today is going to be an amazing day we are talking about revival revival and you must catch the fire today and so we have a great guest in the house so let me give you the chance to send your link i have done that i've shared mine great we have a great guest today traveled all the way all the way it's a very long distance all the way from australia we have pastor robert clancy i call him bob yes <laughs> <laughs> welcome to kenya thank you moses welcome to elevate this is Elevate Television. Please look at that camera and just introduce and call the people into the meeting today. Praise God. To all the viewers here in Kenya and also those that are viewing in outside and to the many nations, God bless you. Welcome as we talk about revival today and obviously about the message for Kenya, but also not just for Kenya, for the whole continent of Africa and for the nations of the earth. So may the Lord bless you as you tune in today. Robert, Bob, can I use yes. Bob? That's fine. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about yourself. Okay, like, so you I'm... Who you are, where you come from, how you came to where you are today. Amen. So uh, I um, reside in Australia mm. and uh, the husband of one wife mm. with six children. Wonderful. And, um, and by God's grace, over many years from 1997... Uh, the Lord came and visited me in a powerful way, and no one handed me a gospel track or ministered to me, wow. but I started to have a series of visitations. Mm. And my mother, who was a staunch Catholic, mm. she gave me this card that had the Our Father prayer on the back. And on the back of the card, it said, if you say this prayer intently enough, mm. um, something will happen. <laughs> so I actually did that for a course of a period of time, um, as there were certain things going in my life that were not were not well, and um, and there were some these encounters that I had, and I saw myself, which I thought I would be an ambassador because mm. I saw myself in a suit in foreign countries, oh. not realizing actually God was calling me to be an evangelist, uh, to be a messenger of the gospel. And this was before you even gave God gave yes. to Jesus. Before I even started reading the Bible. Amazing. So yeah, Amazing. so so there was a series of these things. Mm. And that, that, in, that occurrence took place more and more. Okay. Yeah. All right. So when, after that, you got saved. And then yes. you, got into, you got into active ministry or what did you yeah, say? Yeah. So from there, um, obviously, the Lord, being a Catholic mm -hmm. and having these experiences, I actually thought I was going to become a priest. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that started the process. Ah. And then I realized that my experience ah. wasn't fitting in with the, ah. the denomination be, that I was currently in. Father Clancy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so though reading some of the stories of the old saints, mm. um, St. Francis and things like that, yeah. um, they, were, they matched my, my experience. Amen. And, um, and from there, the Lord called me out and there was a series of visions that he showed me. Mm. In actual fact, he showed me like a, this series of planets and I, would, I was leaving Earth in this rocket mm. and then I would go to these different planets and what, what that represented on my a journey towards the sun. Mm. And though the solar system in this dream mm. was not our normal solar system because there was more planets between he, Earth and the sun, the, each planet represented a denom denomination, but the Lord said, no, I don't want you to stay in denominations. I want you to focus on the sun. So he was wow. giving me a picture of my, my future, Amen. about the kingdom, and what my work would be in the future to promote non-denominational thing, but more uh, a sense of the kingdom work. Amen. Yeah. 
I hope the Kenyans have treated you well. Yes, uh, they have very much make so. Make sure they give you coffee. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I want to just pick it up from 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 what I read about and and and, and when I heard about you yes. about revival. Yes. You have been a, 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 you know you're a missioner. You're yes. a revivalist. Yes. You are a pastor. Yes. I tell you, a husband. Yes, a that's father. great. Amen. Now, uh, which is a very great picture, and we really appreciate. I mean, talking about revival. Yes. You know, um, maybe you can break it down because sometimes, you know, in Kenya, yes, or, or even in the world, we have a lot of big words. Yes. That sometimes they get lost in. You know, we just say revival. Sometimes we, we are left. Okay, what is it? Yes. So would you just try to break it down? Yes. Well, Psalm 85 verse 6 says, May you revive us again, mm. O Lord, that we may rejoice mm. in you. Mm. So, what is revival? Revival is bringing to life that thing that is nearly dead, wow. that is dried up. Mm. So, when we look at the scripture, we look at Ezekiel 37, we see the valley of the dry, dry bones. bones yeah. And Ezekiel gives him the spiritual experience where he sees, and he says, what do you see? Mm -hmm. I see dry bones. And that is, in a sense, maybe some people may see the church has become dry bones, mm. or certain areas of our life have become spiritually dry. Mm. But God sees potential, because he, he, he says Ezekiel saw in the natural, mm. but God saw potential. Mm. So he said, speak to those dry bones and mm. speak life. Mm. Revival is a word that's probably been overly used in the church today. We yeah. say that we're having some revival meetings. We say we're, we can sing a song that's mentioning the name revival. Yeah. But I think that the church, because it's been a while since we've encountered genuine revival. Yeah. It's been a while since we've really understand what revival is. Yeah. Revival is a sovereign move of God. Yeah. So it's not even I man's, like it's not even man's best evangelical effort mm. it's not man's best crusade effort mm. though those things are good revival is when god sovereignly comes mm. and takes over amazing yeah so when king solomon built the temple mm -hmm. we know that they made the sacrifice god received the sacrifice mm. and then the cloud of glory the shekinah cloud came into the holy place mm. And even the priests had to stop what they were doing. Wow. They had to lay prostrate mm. because when the Lord of the work is present, mm. even the workers must stop. Mm -hmm. So what revival is, is when God himself comes, not only works in partnership with the church, but actually comes to take over for a period of time. Mm. So you can be in ministry. You can be a missionary on the mission field. You can be in ministry for 45 years. Yeah. When revival comes... God can do something in one day that um, took you 45 years to amazing. achieve. Amazing. Even in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Wow. So, so that is what I've learned being a missionary mm. and being into many rural areas of Kenya. Mm. I've traveled throughout the whole of Kenya. Wow. Um, East Africa, mm. Southern Africa, and other parts of Africa. Um, just by foot, by matatos, by taxis. Mm transport started very simple yeah. um and what i what i've come to understand is that revi what revival is and what i was doing all these years mm. um god can change something in one day amazing yeah. i like that interpretation it's a move of god amen when it takes over we've had um, <clears throat> we you know you know we read about revivals you know yes we we can remain historic you know we yes. have the welsh revival we have the, you know the spiritual awakenings that we can talk about the azusa street yes um we are talking about revival now yes uh, when we see these revivals uh, are they uh, was god um, restoring some things what, what, what uh, you know, in regard to those revivals and what you see, yes. I, I believe you have seen something for this time. Yes. What is your picture? Well, it's very important that we look at history, revival history, mm. because that's what we call digging the wells of revival. Yeah. And that's why Isaac, the Bible says in the Genesis, that he redug the wells of Abraham, his mm. father. Mm. So redigging the wells in understanding what was the spiritual climax prior to the revival starting mm. and most in most cases there was devastation there was uncertainty there were um, 
recessions, there were economic hardships, there were a decay in moral society, mm. there were riots, there were different things. So a lot of what we see today, even in Kenya and the nations of the earth in uncertainty, mm. they also were passing through certain difficult times prior to the revival coming. Mm -hmm. So those revivals were also sovereign moves of God. Even if I look at East Africa, there were East African revival that took place in Uganda, mm -hmm. which spread and impacted um, Kenya in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And then there were other moves where the Pentecostal move came here throughout the 60s, the 70s and the 80s. And when I come and visit some of those mature pastors, those in their 85s, 86, they tell me of how powerful the Holy Spirit moved Amazing. in those early days. Mm. So revisiting those stories helps us to understand what was revival, what was different, mm -hmm. and what can we hope for. Amazing. When you talk about revival, when you go to places, you've yes. been to different places of the world, um, do you carry revival in terms of that locality or do you just come, you know, generally God is reviving and we just declare it? Yes. Well, from a prophetic point of view, mm -hmm. um, what, what God does with revival, he raises up prophetic intercessors. Okay. Revival cannot come unless it's been birthed in prayer. Mm -hmm. So revival always starts with travailing prayer. Travailing prayer. Travailing prayer, when one travails, so if we go to Romans 8, um, verse 26 to 28, it says that the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. prays for us in our weaknesses mm -hmm. with groanings that cannot be uttered. Mm -hmm. Now, the mistranslation for this is that a lot of us assume this is spiritual tongues, ah. but it's not spiritual tongues. Yeah. It's actually a travailing, mm. a groaning, mm. a weeping. There are spiritual giftings in intercession mm -hmm. that in all the revivals past mm. to even present, God is starting to awaken intercessors mm. to start to travail that, that revival may be birthed within a nation amazing so it begins with traveling so now that you've gone that way what are those uh, it begins with the travail mm. is there a sequence of events yes the travail then so so the travail is a birthing mm -hmm. so according to isaiah 66 verse 8 mm. it says that can a nation be, be born, born in a day mm -hmm. now we see the fulfillment of that prophecy in May 14, in mm. 1948, with yeah. the birthing of Israel once again. Yeah. But from a spiritual context, God is challenging the church and says, can I not do something and change a whole country within a day? Can I not revive that country? Mm. So first it starts with prayer. So mm -hmm. we are in a moment right now upon mm. the earth mm. where God is raising end time mm. prophetic intercessors mm. so each nation that i go to that i'm declaring this end time revival there is a impartation Amen. being placed upon intercessors mm. to endure it's like a grace to be able to pray from your normal say half an hour mm. hour or your mm. midnight prayers mm. to all of a sudden you're able to pray for seven hours Amazing. eight hours Amazing. and a lot of people say how is that possible pastor but it is very impossible. A lot of people don't understand the price that it takes mm. for the anointing. Mm. And that price, when we talk about price, it's the time we spend in prayer mm. with God. Amazing. So, so for revival to come, it comes through prayer because you are a carrier of something. Mm. So prayer is a catalyst of revival. Yes. Um, where is the place? Um, because I will, I will be dealing with something. I want I want you to pick up. Eh? Mm. Uh, you've said prayer. Yes. Then you have said, uh, what is the place of proclamations? Okay. The teaching so, of God's word. Okay. So the proclamation of the gospel, mm. it has power. The Bible says the gospel has power mm. unto mm. salvation. Right, it's called, talking about when it talks about power, it's mm. translated in Greek as dunamis. Dunamis, yeah. dunamis is like a dynamite, right? It's an explosive prayer. Yeah. The gospel has 
power, when the gospel is proclaimed, mm. the forces of darkness in an area have to retreat. They mm. have to remove back, mm. right? The promise within scripture is it says in Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 3, it says there is a time coming that even the idols of the land shall be cut off. Wow. The false prophets shall flee the, the, the land mm. and the spirits operating behind those idols mm. will also flee the land. Mm -hmm. When revival comes, see, mm. there is a spiritual battle of thrones, mm. gates mm. and altars. Oh. The throne is the seat. Mm -hmm. There are spiritual seats of authority because Satan cannot be everywhere mm. he's not omnipresent there are the seats of satan within each nation or region we call them principalities mm -hmm. so if we saw daniel in daniel chapter 10 yeah he was praying and fasted for 21 days but there was a messenger that came or sent by god but it was restricted by the principality of persia yeah. right there is a spiritual battle. So there was a seat where this principality sat mm. that his job is to keep dominion over the, the forces of darkness in the region mm. to stop revival. So when revival comes and the proclamation of the gospel comes mm. through someone, a vessel that has invested in prayer, mm. right? Because you can, you can preach, mm. but there is no power. Mm -hmm. right? That's why Paul said, don't be... Um, it's not about eloquent speech or how intelligent you are, but it's the uh, demonstration oh, of power. power. How does that power come? Through prayer. Mm. So the proclamation of the gospel then starts to tackle against these principalities. When revival comes, these principalities are arrested. Mm -hmm. When they're arrested, mm -hmm. what happens is the angels come and surround that region. Mm -hmm. Then who sits on the throne? Only one that is worthy. Yes. It is Jesus yes. Christ. Whoever sits on the throne is the spirit that's operating behind the altar. Mm -hmm. So if you're wondering why we're not seeing revival is because that principality over regions has not yet been arrested. Now, mm -hmm. it's not just anybody can come along and arrest mm -hmm. those principalities mm -hmm. and don't mm -hmm. try to do that don't at home. That. But when there are intercessors that come, and they start to increase in a land and they start to pray. And when a nation repents, mm. we've got to understand there is power in repentance. That's why this movement is oh, called amazing. Repentance Revival. Why? Because when a nation repents, mm -hmm. it is reborn, it's rebirthed through the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It is transformed and changed by the cross mm -hmm. and exalted in righteousness. My question today, Moses, mm -hmm. can Kenya be reborn in a day? Yes, it can. It can. Yes, it can. It's true. It's yes. scripturally it can. Yes, it can. Now, imagine the prophet Elisha came to Judah, and Judah was surrounded by the uh, Syrian the army, Syrians, um, yeah. and they were locked in. Mm -hmm. There was no water. There was no food. Even people started to do some atrocities within that nation. Mm. He said, this time, tomorrow, mm -hmm. it says you will have an abundance, mm -hmm. right? They were under siege. It mm -hmm. looked impossible. Yeah. Just like Kenya right now. <laughs> it looks like there's a lot of uncertainty, <laughs> yes, right? Uh -huh. But God is saying that things can change mm -hmm. in a day. Amen. Yes, things can change. So if yes. a nation can be reborn in a day, mm. things can change in a day, mm. even for this nation. Yeah. All right. You've spoken about prayer, mm. proclamation of the gospel, and repentance. Yes. What are the clear signs of a revival? The clear signs of revival are mm. when Mr. Teary eyed and Mr. Amen return back to the church. Please say that again. When Mr. Teary eyed and Mr. Amen <laughs> return back to the church. Uh, we need to see tears again. Yes, we need to see tears and uh -huh. we need to see amens. amens. Wow. So, literally, break it down. You know, we may say, we may start crying. Yes. <laughs> well, so I suppose the, uh, the crying aspect of it, it says, in, according to Joel chapter 2, mm. verse 17, mm. it says, when the ministers mm. come to the porch of the altar, and weep, and weep yeah. 
and stand in the gap of intercession and pray and repent on behalf mm. of the people that God would remove the shame, that God would remove the reproach of the people. Mm. So it requires us. So how does revival start? It starts from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. When revival comes to the pulpit, it flows to, to the, the congregation. congregation. But the revival that is coming, mm. because when God comes sovereignly, that's when the pulpit and the pew become level, mm -hmm. right? At the moment, there is a, a distinction yes. from here. Mm -hmm. But when God comes, it comes, it comes level. Mm -hmm. And I believe that what God is doing in this hour is going to shake nations. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you <clears throat> before I want to ask you if you have a word for Kenya because that is important for us. But before you do that, um, revivals have come, revivals have gone. What is the impact of a revival, especially not just in the church, but also uh, socially, in the community, into the nation, into the region? There is a, a change in the moral atmosphere. Oh, amazing. Police stations. Mm now have no work to do. <laughs> the courts uh -huh. are now emptied. Mm -hmm. um, the health of the nation, even the land itself, starts mm. to produce again. Mm. That's why the scripture says, if my people are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, mm. I will hear from heaven. Mm. I will forgive their sins and even heal the land amazing when revival comes it's a benefit for the government yeah. it's a benefit for the youth mm -hmm. it's a benefit for families mm -hmm. it's a benefit for everything so my message for kenya is mm -hmm. the future of kenya mm -hmm. is in the mouth of every believer are we speaking blessings over this nation mm -hmm. or we're speaking curses over this nation well there's some people watching online i Amen. see princess julie she says fathers provide spiritual covering okay, okay. she's saying something bukangai wickliffe says hallelujah chokera kobia hallelujah pastor cheese chisika we have moses okoth uh we have Ch yeah and more of us so keep keep you know keep interacting with us we want to just be involved with you and uh, Pastor Clancy here so that we can build on a conversation. Let me ask you about leadership. Yes. Revivals come and sometimes we see like, I don't want to use the word wastage, it's like they fizzle out. Yes. In a church, in a nation, in a people. What is the place of leadership where leadership comes in to steer this revival? Leadership is very pivotal. Now, when leadership comes in for a revival, they are just stewards. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. Because it's God himself that sovereignly comes. Mm -hmm. But talking about leadership in the church is vital. Now, the scripture says, when the shepherd is struck, the sheep scatter. Mm -hmm. How is the shepherd struck? Now, it could be compromise of sin or, mm -hmm. or some type of thing, but it also could be discouragement. It, it also could be attack. A lot of leaders today are under attack. In mm -hmm. actual fact is that through maybe some of the transgressions of leaders, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden the people have scattered and they become anti-leadership. Mm -hmm. So you can't become anti-leadership because eventually you can become anti-church. If mm -hmm. one becomes anti-church, mm -hmm. they become anti-Christ. Mm -hmm. So... Our, our goal is never to become anti-church, but rather to pray for the church. Mm -hmm. So what I see with Kenya is I see a lot of sheep have scattered at this moment. Mm -hmm. I see the youth are scattered because there's no leadership. Mm -hmm. The Bible also warns us that zealousness without wisdom leads to sin. Mm -hmm. Wisdom comes in through uh, strong leadership. Wisdom from God, where we're able to consult with God. Mm -hmm. And obviously the Bible also said, in the multitude of counselors, mm -hmm. there is wisdom. Mm -hmm. 
So we need strong leadership once again yeah. in the nation, mm -hmm. in the church, because the way the, in the way that the church goes is the way that the nation goes. Yeah. So the church is the light for the nation. We are the agency of heaven. We are the mm -hmm. embassy of heaven. Mm -hmm. So we need to represent God here in a positive light. So uh, obviously we haven't always done that in cases. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think Joel 2.17 says, when the priest comes back to the altar and weeps and cries and asks for God's for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Maybe we haven't led by the right example that we have. <laughs> and I speak for myself as well. Okay. Even being a father, you know, sometimes you make mistakes in the home, mm. but you also need to own up to those mistakes. Mm. And your children need to see that you are also human as well, mm. but you're willing to humble yourself before God. So leadership in revival is that we are just stewards of revival. We don't lead revival, it is God himself that leads revival. We are going to go for a break, but not now. Before we go, I want to ask you something that um, in regard to that leadership, we have seen um, what, what some people have written and said, institutionalized revival. Yes. Where people have picked, you know, what God was doing and uh, built institution on top of it. What would you say? I would say that the revival that is coming what the Lord is showing me. It is beyond the walls. Mm. It's beyond our understanding. Mm. When true revival comes, it's not based on what we would like to measure in the secular mm. of leadership. Mm. But it is something that is going to be far beyond our understanding. Mm. An actual fact is that the Bible has promised that the latter glory and the latter reign mm. shall be really measured right. seven times greater. Mm. So imagine that. Every revival that has come so far mm. is nothing in comparison mm. to what is coming. Mm -hmm. He said that the knowledge of God, mm. the knowledge of his glory, shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Mm -hmm. What is coming is not a mathematical equation of seven, but seven means complete, complete fullness mm -hmm. the fullness of god is about to come upon the earth that is not going to be just in one regional area one location one nation but it may start in one place but it's going to spread very very quickly mm -hmm. with a very specific purpose in preparing a bride for the coming groom wow you know, I'm, I'm, I'm caught up by your speaking. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> in a very few, we have less than a minute. Um, I, I just will pick it up in, this, in, in the next uh, session. But um, I wanted to talk about um, the apathy, you know, the people, you know, the, I heard you say that the church is scattered here mm. in Kenya. Um, the apathy, you know, the, the hopelessness, the feeling that uh, nothing new is coming. What does revival do to that kind of a condition? It complete well, as I said, revival is reviving those things yeah. that are nearly dead. Mm. So apathy, uh, discouragement, all those different things. And, and as I saw your profile, it said radical Moses. <laughs> it it <laughs> radicalizes people, yeah, not right. in a negative light, yeah. but radical because our spiritual battle is in the spirit. But mm -hmm. we become radicalized in the sense of we become bold, just mm. as it was on the day of Pentecost. Mm. Peter was filled with boldness mm. that when he preached, mm. you know, there were occasions where 3,000, where 5,000 mm. came in because mm. of the proclamation. Once mm. again, mm. proclamation of the gospel mm. was preached. Mm. People came in and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So Amen. there is a sound that comes with revival, which I think we will talk about after yes, the break. Yes, we need to talk about that. Yeah. Well, we, we're going for a break. I want to... We're going for a break and you are going to keep it elevate. Please remember this. Call your friends. Let them know that uh, Pastor Clancy is in the house. He's talking about revival. You need to hear this. You know, it's good to listen later, but I want you to hear it live because he's going to be speaking the word of the Lord today. And he's also going to be giving us uh, great information and great you know, understanding about revival in this place. See you after the break. <laughs> 